Oh, Google, what are you doing? On the Chromium blog, limiting private API availability in Chromium. Let me explain this, Mike Judge style. So, so what's going on? Why, why, why is everybody upset about, you know, these all these Linux distros threatening to drop Chromium? I, I don't understand what's happening. Well, you see, during a recent audit, we discovered that uh, these third-party builds of Chromium could actually access the Chrome API. So we had some interoperability that we didn't intend. You could synchronize your bookmarks, and but we provided some other integrations to these third-party distros. And, uh, you know, that was, uh, that was a bug. It was an unintended feature. We didn't mean to do that. Oh, okay. So, you know, you talk to the distribution maintainers and, you know, and maybe there's some alternatives because, um... You know, we, we have kind of a lot of browsers that are based on Chromium that we work with in kind of our, our open source ecosystem here, so, you know, uh, they, they know, right? Well, well, now hang on, hang on a second there, Professor. We fixed the glitch. See, we, we prefer to avoid confrontation wherever possible, and it'll just naturally work itself out. <laughs> That's literally what's happening in the Chromium world right now. Google is dropping third-party uh, integration or, you know, like I say, they, they discovered during an audit that uh, some third-party Chromium-based browsers could use the API for things like bookmarks and that kind of thing. And if you don't like it, well, you can just take your data and go home, which is literally what they have on January 15th. I think this is a good idea. This is actually good for users. Uh, let's talk about why. All right, so here's the deal. I think that once Google management realizes how idiotic this is, they're gonna walk it back because one, there's gonna be a lot of upset Linux users, and two, this really is idiotic for Google's unstated mission of, you know, <laughs> gathering and conglomerating as much data as possible. Google makes a lot of money on ads and analytics and things like that, and having this data on you it's better than not having this data on you and if you want to use Chrome and sync Chrome with Chromium um, you know that's a perfectly fine thing to do uh, you might be security minded you might say okay for all of my regular you know day job browsing I'm gonna use Chrome because I don't care I mean I don't there's it's a rabbit hole that I don't know we could go down I don't want to get into right now but for online banking and things that are more secure maybe I'll use Chromium it's useful to have synchronization between the two. You can have multiple Chromium-based browsers at a time. Certainly for like development and web developers, it's nice to have more than just Chrome plus incognito Chrome open at any given time to juggle different sessions and do testing and stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot of edge cases here. But this also has to do with like third-party integration and third-party stuff for data. So Google's solution here, which by the way, this has been like this for seven years. So you know, during a recent security audit, that is insulting. It's very, very insulting because Google is some of the smartest people in the world. They're not that stupid. This was by design. And so to sort of sweep it under the rug is, oh, this was unintended, an unintended feature. Yeah, no, well, it's not. I mean, it literally is a scene out of office space at this point, but that aside. The other reason this is really um, kind of silly for Google is that it's going to accelerate the adoption of other browsers for people that care. So first off, first stop in that conversation, Microsoft Edge. Yeah, Microsoft Edge is based on Chromium, but look at how much work Microsoft has had to do to build features into their version of Chromium. So Google's turning off all of these features. A lot of these features like Google Chrome Bookmark Sync are not really things that Microsoft wanted in the first place, but suppose that you are a developer and you want to build these things in in your own custom browser. Well, I think to avoid, uh, you know, accusations of uh, anti-competitive behavior, um, they do offer API access for a lot of this functionality. You can apply for and get an API key. The problem is that this is a little bit of a Trojan horse offering from Google because if you actually go to the API and you look at some of the integrations, well, first off, forget using the speech API. I mean, just forget that. I've had so many requests for it that they had to put it in a blinking yellow banner at the top of the page, basically, because, you know, that's just right out. You're going to need that. But things like click to call, click to call are only intended for Google's use. I got news for you, Google. 
Click to call is not really that innovative of a feature. Building that into the browser or hobbling that in some way, come on. I mean, come on, really, come on. But if you look at the API integration, if you have a popular third-party Chromium browser, one, Google is gonna have, you know, complete uh, control or complete, you know, authoritative say-so over whatever it is that you're developing. And then in that case, Google is dealing with the developers, not the end users. Look at the normal transaction with Google. When you go to use Google Maps or other Google services, it's a transaction between you and Google. Well, with these API integrations, if you're gonna use Chrome Data Sync, that's still a transaction between you and Google. To shift that to the developers that are using something like Chromium, it's uh, it's a little bit misleading because it's like, yeah, a third party developer could use that. And that, that would make sense. But then you think it through and it's like, wait, that doesn't really make sense because you know Google's the one that's storing all of this. If I were gonna build my own sync API, I would just you know spin up my own services somewhere else, integrate that into the browser. And I don't, I don't need Google's permission to do that. So I think that applying a, uh, for API access and sort of managing it that way through your, your third party integration uh, really is about being able to control the developer. Look at the integration of the services themselves. I mean, things like bookmark sync and other sync integration. Is there something in the API that makes it inherently insecure? Can an, a person not authorize an application the way that they normally would authorize an application? Does this really need to be something that a developer has to work out with API keys, which can mysteriously have problems or be rate limited or otherwise cause the users of those programs to have bad experiences? It just seems like a headache all the way around, no matter, no matter which way you cut it. Clearly, in the case of Edge, like I was talking about before, Microsoft sort of saw the writing on the wall. They're not doing that. The problem with this is that now the proliferation of third-party integrations for the Chromium browsers are probably going to explode. Like, Microsoft has done a lot of the work, and a lot of it is actually open. So a lot of distro maintainers that are looking to build a robust and really awesome browser are going to take that and run with it, what Microsoft has done, but without the Microsoft integrations either. I mean, if we're going to redo this, we might as well, we might as well redo it completely. This is also going to accelerate other browsers like Falcon. And I can't say enough nice things about Falcon because it works reasonably well. Uh, if you want to, you can manage sync across machines uh, with Falcon with something like Git. And again, it sort of falls into the Linux trope that I don't like, which is, um, you know, if you're a software developer or somebody that really understands the nuts and bolts, you can do the really killer stuff like integration and bookmark sync and blah, blah, blah. But you kind of do it your own way and it works really well and you can be proud of it. But it's not something that normal people would ever want to fool with or, or have the headache of. But this decision by the Google team is going to accelerate um, the engineering that's happening in other browsers. Now there's also Firefox. Firefox is open source and it ticks all of the boxes that Chrome doesn't tick. The problem is that you're a little bit um, riding in the car with Mozilla and you don't really know exactly where they're going to go. And Mozilla, kind of, sort of, is beholden to Google as well with the whole search integration. And so there have been times I can think of where the Mozilla Foundation maybe has done some stuff and it's a little bit questionable, especially with ads and tracking some of the other stuff, but they've done a lot of good too, like encrypted DNS and things like that. They've really got to find and reignite their passion. But, you know, I think Google is sort of, you know, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. I think Google's doing a little bit of that with the funding of the Mozilla Foundation. I hope I'm wrong about that, but that's just kind of how I see it. So uh, that's why I'm more excited about Falcon benefiting as a result of this and other browsers to be sure. Um, a little bit more than, than Mozilla and Firefox because it's 2021. Browser sync is not a bleeding edge technology. Browser sync is not anything that I feel like Google, click to call, click to call. All these technologies are not technologies that Google has to take their toys and go home. And I feel like this could have been avoided and is incredibly stupid. And like I say, if Google management realizes how idiotic this is, they're totally going to walk it back because it's only going to drive uh, acceleration of things that are against Google's mission of, you know, uh, consuming all of the data. 
So this is ultimately, I think, going to be good for users if it stands. And I think that uh, distro maintainers, uh, you know, the, the people at Debian had some had some choice words that I agree with. Um, and I think that this is going to draw unwanted attention to what Google is doing with this data and this, these integrations in the first place. I don't know if you like this video. This, that's pretty much all I've got to say on this. You know, comments below. There's a thread on the level one forum. We can chat about it more if you want. I want to do more of these kind of videos. I mean, I really had to do this one because I was super passionate about it. But on the whole, like, I usually don't like to do these kinds of videos because I'm just some random bozo on the internet talking about stuff. They're pretty easy to do. It's pretty easy for me to collect and outline my thoughts and do the videos. And I want to do more content for the Linux channel, especially content where this is just, you know, me talking and doing some stuff. I mean, why wouldn't you want to do that? It sounds awesome. But um, this one, it just seems so obvious and it was so easy to do. And it is so, like... It is so true to life. It is so office space. And it is awesome and, and hilarious to see that, you know, Google is, is basically becoming as dysfunctional as any other large company. I mean, truly, that is, you know, <laughs> we're witnessing a milestone here. <laughs> they just, they probably got the bobs in a room somewhere that are reviewing this. It's like, oh, yeah, no, we just fixed the glitch. And it's like, okay, sounds good. Middle management moving right along. So, you know. Sorry if I've made your day worse because you work at Google, but um, yeah, I just, it just seems silly. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. I'll see you there.